Jean Piaget and Barbel in Helder's book The Child's Conception of Space from 1956 is presenting three stages of spatial understanding. In the first stage, topological space, only the connections of localizations are understood. This understanding of all by projective space, where relative order and different viewpoints are understood by the child. The third and last stage of the child's development of spatial understanding is Euclidean space, where the child can understand places in the surroundings as locations on a geometrical plane. Euclidean space or Euclidean geometry tells us things about the geometrical plane. For example, that the shortest path between any two points in this plane is the straight line segment connecting them. It also tells us that two parallel lines never meet and all right angles are equal to one another. All those things correspond to what we are meeting in our everyday life and therefore seem natural. This spatial understanding also works perfectly fine when we try to read a map of a small geographical area. However, for a word map, those theorems of Euclidean geometry are no longer valid. In a word map, the shortest path between two points is not a straight line, but along a great circle. The longitudes are parallel when they pass the equator, but they meet in the poles. Right angles are represented with different angles on different locations on the map, and it's the same for scale. Interesting is that some map predictions have properties of Euclidean geometry, and because we are used to those properties, this is looked upon as a desired qualities of the map projection. The genomic projection, for example, actually represents the shortest part between two points as a straight line, like in Euclidean geometry. For conformal projections like the Mercatus projection, the right angles are alike all over the map, and the same for aerial scale on an equal area projection. Okay, to wrap up the background, the surface of the world has properties of non-Euclidean sp spherical geometry, but people understand space in general as Euclidean. Therefore, cartographers have seen it as a goal to try to make word map projections that allow people to understand the map of the world according to properties of Euclidean geometry. This empirical study looks at how the peripheral continuation of word maps is understood by map readers. The hypothesis is that like for many other naive understandings about word map projection, also the understanding about peripheral continuation is based on Euclidean geometry. If we think that the shortest part between any two points of a word map is the straight line segment connecting them, and combine this with the understanding that if we continue in the same direction a complete lap around the world, you will come back to the same place from the other direction. Then you will end up with the naive idea I call linear peripheral continuity. That means that the continuity will be along the tangent of the original route when crossing the edge of the word map. This is the hypothesis I test in this study. Starting to look at the cylindrical projection, we investigate the peripheral continuation of a route following the equator. According to the hypothesis of linear peripheral continuity, persons should propose that continuity will be here, along the tangent of the original route. As we can see, this is also the actual peripheral continuity, therefore we call this a case of actual linear peripheral continuity. If we instead follow a route that obliquely across the edge, the hypothesis tells us that the persons should propose the continuity to be here, along the tangent of the original route. But the actual route follows the great circle, and the actual peripheral continuation is on the same latitude as when it crosses the edge. The last example for the cylindrical projection is when we follow a route along a longitude. According to our hypothesis, the peripheral continuation will be along the same longitude. But the actual continuation when reaching the South Pole is away from the South Pole, a half lap around the world before continuing along the 
uh, or in longitude. We now leave the cylindrical projection and go to an asymmetrical projection. This specific asymmetrical projection has the North Pole in the center and is known from the logo of the United Nations. We do the same procedure also here. And also in this case, we can see that the actual peripheral continuation follows the hypothesis of linear peripheral continuity, and therefore is a case of actual linear peripheral continuity. For an asymmetric direction, this is always the case when crossing the edge perpendicularly. To test the hypothesis of linear peripheral continuity, I constructed a questionnaire that I gave to 670 children aged 9 to 15 years and to 82 adults. The majority of the adults had studied some cartography at university level. The questionnaires used five different word map projections and each of the respondents was only given one questionnaire with one type of word map projection. The respondents were asked to find location and direction for the three airplanes after they had crossed the edge of the word map. We look closer at airplane C on the cylindrical projection and identify the location for the linear peripheral continuation and for the actual peripheral continuation. To be able to quantify the answers, I identified the parts of the periphery that was close and very close to the tangent of the original route. If many proposed continuations was found inside this red zone, then many answered according to linear peripheral continuity. I also marked a green zone and a blue zone that marked if the proposed continuation was close geographically or on the map to the actual preferred continuation. If we now look at the answers by the children for airplane C on the map based on the cylindrical projection, we can see a clear tendency to answer according to our hypothesis. If we check how many percent that proposed the continuation inside the green zone geographically close to the actual peripheral continuation, this is very few, and less than the expected frequency if the proposed continuation was randomly distributed along the edge of the word map. The same thing with the blue measurement that measure closeness to the actual continuation on the map. But for the red measurement, measuring how frequently the respondents answering according to linear peripheral continuation, the frequency was significantly higher than expected. There's two bars, one shows very close and the other close. The linear peripheral continuity is extremely strong also for the proposed continuation for airplane B. Airplane A is a case with actual linear peripheral continuation, and there the respondents have correctly answered according to the linear peripheral continuity. The same pattern can be seen for this word map based on a pseudo cylindrical map projection. These interrupted star projection have really interesting results that I will return to in the end of this presentation, but for now, we can conclude that the red bars are all significantly higher than expected, and the hypothesis is therefore verified as true also for this projection. If we continue to another interrupted map projection, we can see that the linear peripheral continuation is very strong also here. And for the fifth and last projection, all the three airplanes are examples of actual linear peripheral continuation, and the children have correctly proposed the continuations along the tangent of the original route.
To summarize the results from the children, the linear peripheral continuation was found to be entirely dominant among the children regardless of the projection. If we instead look at the results for the adults, the tendency to incorrectly propose continuations according to the linear peripheral continuation is only significantly higher than random for the cylindrical projection, especially for airplane B. Now when this naive understanding has been illuminated, peripheral continuation of world maps can be addressed by researchers, educators and map makers to improve our understanding of our world. Regarding map making, I will now present three possible consequences for designing world maps. The only projection in the study where adults tended to follow the hypothesis of linear peripheral continuity was the cylindrical projection. Probably the straight lines and right angles did not help the respondents to get rid of the Euclidean thinking. A consequence from this is to avoid rectangular projections for world maps. Airplane C on the map based on the star projection had in the study the highest level of correct answers for the children among the planes without actual linear peripheral continuity. Probably the fact that Australia had been split into two acted as a help to understand where the route continued. The second consequence from the study is therefore that geographical or cosmetical objects separated by the periphery can perhaps help the map reader to understand where the map continues. The third idea for improving map designs to help the map reader to overcome the understanding based on Euclidean geometry and instead use a non-Euclidean spherical geometry for understanding world maps is to follow the idea proposed by Fisher and Miller in 1944 to complement the grid of longitudes and latitudes with a network of great circle arcs. And I am convinced that it's possible to overcome a Euclidean spatial understanding and reach a non-Euclidean understanding when reading world maps, both for children and adults, but then this new cognitive aspect of world maps projections together with the previously known difficulties need to be addressed and studied to a higher extent. So this was my presentation. Thank you for listening.